Greetings everyone, Archimedes here, and welcome back to another Brickfield LEGO video. And today, we're going to be beginning our mini-series, Taking Back Technic, where we'll be going through really basic Technic tutorials, and trying to give a really basic knowledge of Technic, so that we can all build amazing technical structures. I want to dedicate this series to the mystical and magical Earth Dragon, who inspired me to write this after making me realize that not everyone really knows how to build with Technic. I was very lucky for my part. I was able to take some Lego classes, and I was able to do first Lego League, and that gave me a much better grasp on how Technic works. But I realized that a lot of Lego builders just simply don't know how to work it. And so, we're going to be starting from the beginning. Just like you, when you first picked up your Lego bricks, learned that three plates stacked together became a brick, I'm going to be showing you how to build with Technic from the very, very beginning. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. These first couple videos are going to be a little less action-packed than usual. Just because there are a lot of fairly basic concepts we need to talk about. For today, we're going to be talking about basic technic geometry. Now please, don't be scared by that really, really, really long math word. Although geometry itself might be terrifying, Lego geometry isn't really that bad. Trust me. Okay, I have one last note before we start the actual video. I suggest that if available, you grab some Technic pieces, some beams, and some pins, and some crossover beams as well. If you don't have them right now, or you don't want to go, you don't want to stand up and pick them up, that's just fine. But having the bricks, being able to build some of the things that I'm going to be showing you in this episode, might be able to help you understand it a little bit. Now, first thing we want to talk about in the Lego Technic world is beams. Now, beams are the essence of your construction. No matter what you're going to build, you are going to use beams. Now, as you can see here, we have the actual Technic beam, like this, and we have the crossover Technic beams. You can see here, they're brick and hole. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is that while normal Technic beams, any sort of brick, are on a two base, so they usually comes in twos, fours, sixes, eights, you get the picture. Technic beams come in a base one, so they'll come in three, five, seven, nine. Now, let's just take a quick comparison between the crossover Technic beams and the Technic beams themselves. For example, here we have a 1x5 beam. And here we have a 1x6 crossover beam. If you know that the 1x6 has five holes, the same as the by 5 beam. Here's a three hole Technic beam and a four studded three hole a crossover beam. If you are building with Technic beams and crossover beams at the same time, there's a very, very simple conversion rate, so to speak. If a beam has, a Technic beam has nine holes on it, its crossover beam will have ten stud studs on it. If a beam has seven holes on it, the crossover will have eight studs. See the pattern? If the Technic beam has a certain number of holes, you just add one more to find the same number of holes crossover beam. If you will note, the spacing in between the studs on a Lego beam is exactly the same as the spacing of any Lego stud. So for example, the distance in between these two holes is two studs. This 
can actually be used as a separate building technique. One can attach on the like one can attach a beam on the top of a brick like this, which can have some uses. You can figure them out for yourself. Now, while it is very easy to just simply stack up the crossover bricks, just like you would build any normal Lego structure, beams are a little different. As you can see, you can't really clip them together. You can't really stack them together, right? So, what you need are some pins. Now, there's a whole bunch of different types of pins, and we'll go into a discussion of that in a later video. But for now, let's just use these little black pins. You can see they've got a little clip on each side, which fits exactly into the holes on the beams. As you can see, you can use those to clip beams together like this. Now, technically, that's really all you need to know. You could probably build a fantastic Technic structure just knowing that you clip beams together using pins. But there's a little more that we can talk about if we want to get into some more advanced things, all right? So one can pin Technic beams and one can stack or clip together crossover bricks beams like this. Now the same thing can apply. You can clip a Technic beam to a crossover beam. I think you get that picture. Now, if you want to pin together a Technic beam and a crossover beam, it's really quite simple. You can just put a couple pins in and clip them together. That is, if you want to work horizontally. But what if you want to build up vertically? Now, this is actually one of the best uses for Technic beams and crossover beams, in my humble opinion. You can use the crossover beams and the Technic beams, or just crossover beams and crossover beams, to make a frame or a scaffolding for a large or a heavy model, or perhaps a model you want to suspend off the ground a bit. Technic provides a great way to add strength to your models. So, all we have to do is just stick some pins into these these uh, crossover bricks and stick this beam on, right? Unfortunately, it's not so simple. It, especially in this case. I invite you to take your Legos, build a similar sub-assembly to what you have here, and try to attach this beam horizontally. As you can see, it just doesn't work. True, you could try it with just one pin, but then there'll be absolutely no stability in the model. This leg here will rock back and forth. But never fear, there is a way. There is a particular formula used to place a beam perpendicular to another set of beams. This ratio, based on the dimensions of the Lego brick itself, is very possible, but it's also really complex. So for now, we're just going to do this a slightly simpler way. I'm just going to show you a few spacings that are very commonly used in LEGO models. And once you understand those, you can work out how they would work in slightly larger contexts. I'll show you the spacings for a 3, 5, and 7 hole gap, and you can figure out the rest. Here is a 3 stud gap. As you can see, I've got the beam down here. Now, let's just take a look at the frame back here. As you can see, the spacing in between the two beams is two plates. So, if you want to make one of these perpendicular legs with a spacing of three in between, you'll need a beam, two plates of any size, and another beam on top. You can throw on two pegs and clip any size beam onto them. So, a spacing of three holes has two plate thicknesses in between. Here is the spacing for a five hole space perpendicular beam. Here, the spacing is two bricks 
and a plate. If you think of a brick as three plates, it's a seven plate spacing for a five hole per perpendicular leg. So a five hole gap has a seven plate spacing. Finally, here is the spacing for a seven hole gap. As you can see here, it's four bricks in between the two beams, or 12 plates. So, if you have a seven hole gap, you'll need a 12 plate spacing, or four brick spacing. Now, those three ratios I just gave you are vitally important for making Technic Lego crossover models. So, three holes, two plates, five holes, seven plates, seven holes, twelve plates. Got it? So for today, we started our adventure taking back Technic from the really, really old, really, really quote-unquote smart people by talking about Technic beams and crossover beams and how they are similar and different. We talked about pinning beams together using these black pins. And we talked about some basic ratios for making perpendicular uh, crossover designs, just like these. Now, I know all of this may have seemed a little complicated and maybe just a little boring, but don't worry. It, get, it gets much better from here. We just kind of needed to lay a little baseline for this video. Next episode, we'll be talking a little bit more about beams, all the different types of them, and some ways to use them, too. If you liked this video, please comment, rate, and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, still, please comment, rate, and subscribe. But also, please tell me what you think would make this video or this channel better. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I bid you all farewell. My name is Archimedes36, and I'll see you next Sunday.